So good to hear our president's voice, Joe. I know you're still on the on the call. On the rec- on the call every day. Um, you probably you guys heard it from Doug's voice. We love Joe and Jill. We really do. They truly are like family to us, and we do everybody here. Does. It's neutral. <laughs> I knew you were still there. You're not going anywhere, Joe. I'm watching you, kids. I'm watching you, kids. I love you. I love you, Joe. I'm not buying it, Kamala, at all. The what you talking about? Award goes to Kamala and Joe. Now there's been some debate about is Kamala Harris black, and I say she is not because Joe Biden ain't your husband, but he is your work husband. And no black woman who hasn't seen their partner for several days is going to accept a phone call. It's got to be FaceTime. Uh Uh-uh, Joe. Show me where you at. Pan the phone around. I love it. (laughs) All right, ready? Is Joe uh, Biden already dead? Ready? Let's go. On the table. Is he already? No, what's going on? I'm just kidding. (laughs) Good luck, Joe. Recover from that COVID, buddy. Make sure you make it out of there. I think he is. I don't care. I'm Canadian. Yeah. <laughs> I, I th- well, I mean, like, look, like, what the government has been doing, though, like, without getting you guys kicked off the platform. Anyone that like has been paying attention and what happened to like Trump and then, like, you know, with them trying to assassinate him, and all of a sudden he gets COVID. Do you say it's like, oh shit, we failed? Uh, maybe, yeah. We fucked up. I, 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 uh, I, think, I am, I am really confused still at this point, like how they let things get this far. I think they put, I, I think they pulled a coup on, on Joe Biden. They didn't have they, to pull a coup. He, he's, he's got dementia. Like I don't think it's yeah, a coup. Yeah. Like any, any, yeah, like, any, any, so any active, any <laughs> active government saying, around a president who has dementia. Him resign. Like I'm pretty sure they, they didn't make him resign. He's just not running again. Like, like he just decided to not. The man run. has like two brains. No, but the, the thing is, his entire party told him to not run again. Yeah, it's but they've been hiding his mental illness for like years. Yeah, I mean, isn't he it just, weird? He just poorly hiding his like, I mean, it's, it's weird that he can't run for re-election, but he's still president. He hasn't resigned yet. So yeah. it's like, well, no, what's going on? Yeah, yeah. who is like? Because I mean, it's the same thing. Lyndon Johnson said he goes, "I'm going to focus on just being the president of the United States rather than running." That's going to be that you know what his excuse is as opposed to resigning. But yeah, I mean, it's really an, an interesting situation that we let it get to this point. Like everyone in on the right side of the aisle was on social media saying, "Dude, can you see how out of it this guy is? He's walking around like looking at ghosts and falling down. Like what's going on?" And then where he goes, shaking a mattress. What, 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 what I thought, what I thought was, I, this must be just like there must be cherry picking video. And then you see that you see the the um, debate and it's like this is a disaster but it's like the worst I've ever seen it's elder abuse it is yeah, yeah, honestly. You're, you're toting your like how old is he 80, 82 80, you're man doesn't even know where he grand, is grandfather around the country dude he shit his pants in France <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if that's true, but maybe he did. Same. <laughs> he totally did. Like I'm not like I, that, point, that a song? I'm, not, I'm not trying to I'm not sorry if he wearing his depends or what. Just like that it rhymes when you said it. <laughs> I identify as Dr. Do you want to know something? I, I'm actually kind of disappointed because it's like the home team's up fifty six to nothing and, and they're gonna kneel the ball for the rest of the fourth quarter. Like I was listening, we were talking about the whole thing with not so erudite. She's like she wants to focus on politics. I'm like, what? Yeah, yeah, like, now what, you do. Like what's left? There's nothing to focus on. It's over. Yeah. Like it's kind of over. We're like we're like eighty six percent chance that president trump's gonna win so like i don't know what else there is to talk about yeah which is why everyone's having their fucking meltdowns right now the thing that's got me that i mean that whole situation is like they wanted to paint this shooter as being this incel like i and i i called this the day after it happened i said you will see that this guy is 20 years old Oh, we can't get in his phone, but we do know he was searching for porn right before he went up there and and did what he did. He goes and has the the you know the foresight to go and drag a, a you know a a ladder up to this place. In I, he would have had to drive the truck with the ladder in the back of the thing, yeah. c- carry it over there, get up there with the what a five fifty six you know AR and yeah. it, with with the with the sight too, yeah, the, the, a, the a, range, a range finder, finder yeah. and the sight and everything and and crack off how many shots? I think at a hundred and forty yards. One hundred fifty yards, yeah. But he's an incel, so now that explains everything. <laughs> so yeah, guy. he's twenty years old. Oh, and he, oh, and he uh, searched for porn right before he went on, and he's given money to let's see, Act Blue and a whole bunch of these other NGOs and and uh, PACs that are that are Democratic PACs. Yeah, I feel like young people don't uh, really understand politics properly right now. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I think like, uh, old it's, people it's, don't understand it either. Well, uh, yeah. It's like <laughs> when, when, uh, like the time. To- I would say like my parents, uh, like I'm from Canada, so it's different, but like when you're raised in a family that votes a certain way, you kind of stick with that. Right. Mm -hmm. 
And then now, the yeah. like with social media and stuff, people are thinking that they're generating their own opinions, but the media is so skewed sometimes, either one way or the other, where you don't really know what's going on. And so it's hard to form your own opinions. Well, I grew up in California and it's like, like I was leaning left. I was very liberal. Like I voted for Obama in 2012. Mm. And then I was registered Democrat when I voted for Donald Trump just because of the things I was seeing and like waking up. So by my education, my whole family is conservative. I was mm -hmm. the only liberal, but by the education that I received and what I learned, you know, it's like, it pulls the heartstrings. It also depends where you go to school too. Do you think you're more conservative now? Oh, hell yeah. I'm more conservative. All right. Right on. Like, um, where I'm from in Canada, like I, we don't have conservative Democrats. Like we have a liberal, like uh, it's, it's different, but like, I would say where I'm from, it's in terms of American, it's a very conservative area. Like a lot of agriculture, oil, like blue collar work. So it's like, I, I always say it's like the Texas of Canada. Cause it's like farms, agriculture. Well, even like, your conservatives, we would consider liberal. Yeah. Yeah, but, probably. Yeah, in general. And by the way, Australia is the same way. Exactly. Yeah. Like exactly. what you guys. That's how Germany also, is like too. Also in the you you're like you guys like the level of laissez faire government that we have in the United States is like our taxes are lower mm -hmm. and it's easier to start a company and to become rich in this country compared to the United Kingdom, compared to Australia, and mm -hmm. compared to uh, For sure. compared. To I'm gonna Canada. read that. I'm gonna read this super chat because I feel like it's timely here. He says, "How do you feel about Bill Clinton's?" Triple economics, tax cut, spending, and invest. Last time we were at a surplus. I don't know. I wasn't born yet. <laughs> uh, I remember this. I do remember us mm. being a surplus, but I don't know if it was because simply because of that. I think the economy no. was starting to boost. It's much different, uh, yeah. May maybe because of things that happened before the Clinton administration, and then he re reaped the benefits. Of and it. then he follows us up with twenty trillion dollars in uh, twenty trillion dollars in debt. Why is no president defaulting on it? Well, defaulting on it or trying to pay it off. There's one or those are the two things. So by the way, if we defaulted on it, that is the quickest way to start World War Three. Yeah, <laughs> I was about to say. Like, you want to talk yes. about like because because one country, the only country that he has an even viable military next to ours, owns all of our debt. That's the reason why. Yeah. You know, that's that's part of where that's gonna happen. Oh, and why are they flying bombers over uh Alaska right now? Cap okay. Captain Michael Sartain. Cool. So every year, so so every yes. year, um, so I, I was part of this thing called red flag. We have a red flag here in Nevada. And then there's also a red flag in Alaska every year. But basically, it's just like a pickup a five on five basketball game with all the Air Force and Navy guys. They get together and then they they have red air and blue air. The red air are the aggressor squadrons. These are people who lit legitimately they're there to antagonize the blue air, which are like young lieutenants who are learning how to fly their F-22s, their F-15s, their F-16s and those different type of aircraft, uh, KC-135s, KC-10s. Every year when we do and I've personally been a part of this every year when we do red flag in Alaska, the Russians will fly over neutral territory that they're a big it's B-21 blackjack. I forgot what they, there's, they have their heavy bombers and they have some of their fighter jets and they'll come just right up to the border of Alaska. And the reason why they're doing that is they're trying to see how quickly the United States um, responds. They're trying to gauge U.S. response time uh, uh, against there. And they also did it because at Elmendorf uh, in Allison Air Force Base, they have F-22s and they wanted to be able to see if they could paint F-22s with their color weather radar or with their, you know, their long distance radar or whatever. It's basically the, uh, the Russians do this every single year. And every single year, the media gets a hold of it and says, Russians flying jets over Alaskan with airspace Chinese bombers. with Chinese bombers, yes. whatever. And guys, I'm telling you, this happens every single year. Please look it up. Historically, this happened, this happened when I was there uh, in 2010, I believe I was uh, in Elmendorf in Allison Air Force Base. I believe, or Elmendorf Air Force, I forgot if it's Elmendorf or whatever, the one that's up in the northern part of Alaska. And I was there, I remember it was 40 degrees below zero. And they do this every fucking year, and it's not a big deal. The Russians are just trying to. It makes for a see. great election cycle story when your president is not running and has dementia. Yes. <laughs> but what about the balloon? Huh? What about the, the, the red balloon? The, the Chinese spy balloon. Yeah, I mean, the, the problem with the Chinese spy balloon idea is like, do you know how many Chinese citizens live in the United States that could just get the same information from just walking around with a phone? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> like, it's not like, like, do you understand? There's yeah. like millions of Chinese citizens that live in this country. Millions. They're like the idea that they needed a fucking weather balloon. I'm sure they launched it, but it's like, it's not that big of a deal. Like it's one of the things when I was a uh, worked in counterintelligence, one of the things we talked about is like, you have students from other countries living here and they're literally being paid by their government or they're, be they're being told by their government to spy on the Americans. Yeah. Like they do it all the time. That's what happens in a free country. I mean, I, I think like it's anything new. 
Go ahead. I mean, I know bigger problems with Chinese and Huawei installing yeah, cell, cell towers. For sure. Near, like, That's a way bigger difference like, than, than a fucking than a balloon. Fo- a balloon. Do you want to know what a Chinese person could do instead of flying a balloon? Walk in, come into the United States on a fucking visa on vacation, go to a store, buy a DJI drone, and just fly it over the same area anytime they wanted, <laughs> and no one would say shit bases. to them. Huh? And they go over like like the military bases. You could do that with a DJI. You could do that with anything. There's no yeah. reason you don't need a fucking balloon for that. I'm just saying, like, I'm not saying the balloon thing wasn't nefarious. I'm just saying it's not that big of a deal. We live in a free country. This is not us getting into North Korea. Chinese people can come here all they want. China. If a Chinese person wanted to buy the fucking Chrysler building, we'd be saying how much? <laughs> Nobody. We are whores when it comes to money in this country. Whores. Did you do a yeah, pack? Of, guys, ladies and gentlemen, if you did not know, the Jacksonville Jaguars are owned by a Pakistani man. Yes, the fuck they are. Yeah, guys, you are just completely out of. The like, people are just completely fucking out of touch. Like we don't give a shit in this country. We have a golf tournament that is completely run by the Saudis. We don't care. Like it, we. If you give us money in the United States, we will sell you anything. In other countries, if you're not a citizen, you can't go there. Like I have friends of mine that go live in the UK, and there's like certain loopholes they have to go through before they can buy property. In the United States, we you don't even have to have a fucking work visa. We will let you buy any. If you want to spend money in the United States, we will bend over and say, thank you, sir. How much can I have another? Fuck in this country. <laughs> yeah, you, what, you invest true. in something, uh, you can get your entrepreneurial visa like – yeah, dude, by the way, you can trade U.S. equities. We don't care what citizen, we don't care what country you're from, but it doesn't work the other way around. You can't do it the other way. In the United States, we do not give a shit. If you have money, money is green and it all speaks the same language to us. So this idea that the Chinese are sitting there like fucking spying on us, they can spy us anytime they want. Spies on us, but... uh-huh. You know what the Chinese could do? They can literally go on YouTube and watch a video of a drone flying <laughs> over the same military base. That's how open we are in this country. Nobody says, nobody stops shit here. Like literally, can you imagine? Like you want to go see where Premier Xi Jinping lives? Go into his house as an American citizen? Do you know how ridiculous that would be? That would never fucking happen. Chinese people do it all the time. They go to the White House and take fucking photos in the Oval Office and nobody says shit. That's the way it is. Like the idea that you're spying on Americans. What are you spying on? Like people have known for years how to build an F-22. They just can't do it because we have more money than them. That's the way it works. That's it. That's it. There's no way they can ever afford to do that. That's why we're the only country in the world with like with uh, Blue Water Navy and stealth technology. Anyway, sorry. I want to say- Are you sick of dating apps and want a genuine way of meeting high quality women? Click the link in the description and I'll send you my high status networking playbook so you can start dating high quality women today.